From Tally to Cali, it's time to wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source. And this is Wake Up Warchant, presented by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. One more corner pocket. Now here's Warchant.com's ass on Hunter Vandy and Corey Clark. <laughs> Wake up! What is up, everybody? It's Wake Up Warchant, presented by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill, coming up on today's show. It's been a whole week! Whole week since we were out at practice. We were out there yesterday. Whole bunch of observations coming your way. Buckle up, all you football hardos. Wake up, Board Chan, presented by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill, Tallahassee, Florida, cptallybar.com, the website 2475 Appalachian Parkway. That's the physical address. Get your lunch special on from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., Monday through Friday on Wednesdays, five-piece chicken wings and french fries. There you go. Get whatever flavor wings you want, too. They've got, like, over a dozen varieties. They'll toss in that sauce. It's, it's delicious. Can't go wrong over at the Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. Hope you enjoyed Trivia Night. Don't forget, tomorrow night, Thursday, bingo night, 7 o'clock, sharp. Test those bingo skills, win drinks, and prizes. Always a good time over at the Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. Warchant.com, your ultimate seminal sports source. Once you hit the five-star rating and review on the uh, Apple iTunes podcast platform, I guess, Hit the thumbs up, subscribe to YouTube, and subscribe to WarChant.com. So much stuff going on over there. Core's observations, video, uh, baseball recaps, recruiting up the wazoo, all days, all hours. It's always going down over at WarChant.com. And a programming note uh, to everybody. Corey, uh, I'm going to loop you in on this one, too. I'm going I'm I'm to CC you on this right now live as we do the show. Uh, Renegade Express uh, post is over on the tribal council right now. You know how it goes. We, we put a thread. We tack it to the top of the tribal council. You folks jump in there and start throwing questions at us so we can do an entire show on it. Well, we're going to do a little bit of a wrinkle on it now. we got our friends, our great friends, our awesome friends, the awesome folks over at Cummins uh, who helped us out with the War Chant Report this past year are going to give us a, a nice little kind of added touch to how we do Renegade Express. It's called Generating Discussion Sparked by Cummins. Go ahead, post your questions. Corey and myself are going to pick out the singular best question every single week, and we'll have a drawing every month uh, to give out prizes from our friends at Cummins. And then we ultimately, Corey, this will all culminate in an end-of-year giveaway with a grand prize that will be one of either choices of either a power station or a power generator, portable generator from Cummins. So uh, we're still figuring out what we're going to give away, how that's all going to work out. But it starts today. Get over there, post your questions. It's probably going to be me picking out the best question every month, every week, rather, um, unless Corey wants to start diving in there and sifting through it. Or he can just, on the fly, Corey's like, you know what? I like this question the best. Yeah, that and, sounds like fun. Yeah. Yeah. And then you can always hit the thumbs up on an actual post uh, in the thread. If you like a question, folks, if you don't feel like actually getting involved, you can throw your weight behind a question and hit the thumbs up, and that's how we'll, uh, we'll factor it all in. Anyhow, it'll be fun. We're actually going to turn on the cameras. It'll be a video element to the podcast. So if you're watching us on YouTube, you'll see our faces for about five minutes. So that's how that's how we're going to do these video podcasts. Corey, they're going to have to pay us to turn our cameras on. That's how it works. Mm -hmm. Okay, good, good. But we're going to get that mad money now. We're going to oh. get that Cummins money. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I like it. Institutional money. I right. Good stuff. Hey, how was uh, how was Tuesday with uh, Brady Clark in town, man? Uh, it was good. It was good. We got there. Uh, so we got to the baseball field around four fifteen. So I took him up so he could watch a little batting practice with Jacksonville. And then we could turn around and watch the football practice. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, it was fun. He got, a, he got the best of both worlds. He got to watch a very good baseball team a win a game, and he got to watch a, a very good football team uh, continue to practice to try to maybe, maybe somehow sneak into the playoff this year if they're allowed. Okay, I like it. I like it. All right, let's start off, I guess, maybe like the, the first half of practice. Uh, you know, I'll start off period three. That's when they go 11-on-11, 11 11, obviously, everybody. Not a lot of greatness from the offense early on in this practice, and I think, Corey, you mentioned that overall it seems like the defense won the day. They might have started it off by the way they performed uh, in period number three. The only real big highlight to me uh, was a, a fantastic throw from DJ Uwe Ungalale uh, to Hakeem Williams, a bit of a back shoulder toss uh, when they were out there running against, uh, I think they were, the, they were the second unit that on, on Tuesday Brock came out first they go down one side of the field and they usually either go for a touchdown or a field goal and then they'll uh, reboot it and put the new quarterback in with uh, some new skill guys around him some new offensive linemen but um, 
they made the field goal on the first uh, go around. I, I started walking out when they uh, started marching down the field with DJ's unit, but Brock did lead them to a, a 37 ish yard field goal that Ryan Fitzgerald nailed. Uh, but otherwise it was mainly runs and scrambles from Brock uh, DJ. Uh, meanwhile, had that really nice completion to a uh, Hakeem Williams also had a short one to uh, Brian Courtney that uh, DeMarco Ward snuffed out. DeMarco Ward had a pretty decent yeah. old day out there, he I did. felt like. He did. Um, what did you see from one-on-ones and some of the seven-on-seven work, Corey, uh, that led you to believe that the uh, the defense kind of won the day? I was over with Ira watching some of the defensive linemen taking on the offensive linemen trench work, and it seemed like every time I looked over to my left to keep an eye on what was going on seven-on-seven, it seemed like the ball kept hitting the ground. Yeah, there were too many drops. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. Um, and again, that's something that's now, again, we're six practices in, but that's two practices that I think have been dominated by drops. And you start to think, okay, there's some real, there's some players here. There's some there's some talent to work with, but I don't like how often the ball is hitting the ground. Um, and that's something like, I think Hakeem, when you talked about that catch he made, which was great. He had three drops throughout yeah. practice. Like drops, you got to you got to make those catches. And again, I get it. It's May or sorry, it's March, April. Golly, the third time's the charm, folks. It's <laughs> April. Um, but so we got you have four and a half months until the game, the the real game. But you know, habits matter. Get get into good habits. Have a practice um, where the ball doesn't hit the ground at all. And, it, and I just thought it hit the ground too much. Van Dravius had a really bad drop. Um, I'd like. I'll be honest with you. I'd like to see more out of Van Drabius. I I haven't yeah. liked what I've seen out of him uh, so far. He just hasn't wowed me really in any capacity. Like he was wowing us last spring. Um, I'd like to see that change because there's talent there, real talent, um, and it just hasn't. Right now, it doesn't feel like it's clicking. Um, I thought okay. So, but here's what I love about Azaria Thomas. Azaria Thomas gave up two catches uh, in one on ones, which is unheard of. The first one was the very first play. Portier beats him inside on, like, I don't know what you'd call it, like a 15-yard, 18-yard inside move. Barely. It is a great throw. I think Brock Glenn threw it. I'm not sure. I couldn't see. Uh, I usually just pay attention more to the the, the, the receiver and the, and the DB. But it was a great throw. And it had to be a great throw because otherwise, Azaria is either batting it or picking it off. And he gets so upset. When he doesn't make the play, that's what I just love about him. Like he claps really hard, like angry at himself because he's right there to make the play. It takes a really nice throw and a nice catch by Portier um, to keep him from batting it down. And then I would say, I don't know, man, 15 minutes later, they're doing one-on-ones um, in the end zone, which I don't, yeah, I guess they do that. Yeah. From the five yard line, they're doing one-on-one routes in the end zone. And Malik Benson goes up and makes a one-handed catch over him. A great catch. Azari is in good position because he almost always is. And Malik Benson goes and one hands it. Um, and again, it's just like, even when he gives up catches, they're never easy. He's always right there. And he's just so highly competitive which the great ones are. And again, so I know, I know I'm not running down the list of everything that happened, but that always strikes me as how, how competitive Azaria Thomas is in every drill, but especially the one-on-ones. Like, he hates getting beat at all. And it's one-on-ones. You're supposed to get beat. They have the whole field to work with. Um, so, yeah. So, the one-on-ones, Azaria got beat by Portier. Um, uh, and then uh, got beat. I guess you'd say got beat. I don't know. I don't know what you'd say when Malik goes and one hands one in the end zone. Uh, but that there weren't a ton of offensive highlights in the one on ones. The 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 DBs had three interceptions. Um, Kai ba- Conrad Hussey had a really good one um, where he outlept the receiver for the ball um, in the end zone. And then Kai Bates had one where he's covering a guy, and I can't remember who it was. It might have been Jakai. And Jakai kind of bolts to the inside in the middle of the end zone. Kai Bates bolts with him and then turns around, and the ball is in his belly. And he's able in his belly to make the play and then go and uh, and go get the interception. So, overall, in the one-on-ones, I thought the DBs were much better. Jabril Rawls had a couple really good reps against Jalen Brown. Um, but that catch by Malik Benson was, uh, hey, man, he's going up against literally Aslan. He might be going up against one of the five best cornerbacks in the country. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We, I, I'm starting to feel more and more like that with his REA Thomas. Um, and, it, you know, iron sharpening iron and everything, like him going up and making that catch, that's a big deal, man. That's a, And Hakeem Williams certainly told him that. 
he told him he was nasty. He came over and yelled, "You're you're na- you're nasty. Bo- you're a nasty boy," or something like that. <laughs> well, that sounds weird, uh, but he but he did say something to that effect. Um, so yeah, man, I I think that was the that was my favorite part of practice was the Malik Benson catch because the kind of catch he had to make against a great cornerback because that's what you want Malik Benson to be, right? And mm-hmm. that's that I thought was the most impressive play he's made that I've seen, and that comes on the heels of. Uh, you know, having a touchdown catch in the scrimmage. So maybe Malik is becoming that guy, right? Mm. There's a chance. After practice, Coach Norvell mentioned going back, watching the scrimmage, he thought that maybe the quarterbacks played a little bit better than he initially thought when he spoke to us uh, after the scrimmage, but then talked about the struggles on Tuesday and a large part of that probably being due to install. Mm. Um, but for receivers, though, I mean, I understand for maybe quarterbacks that being a problem, but for receivers, like the drops, I mean, if the ball's there, the ball's there, right? Or, or yeah. can we can we give them benefit of the doubt that they're maybe running new concepts and, and, and new combinations that are, you know, they're not used to the ball getting there at that point in time in their route and on that particular spot of the field, or is that just being way too uh, forgiving? Yeah, no, I think that's being too forgiving. I mean, a, a couple of these are just bad drops. They're they're just you know, Hakeem, the last I think it was the last play of seven on seven, maybe. Um, that's a play you got to make, man. That's just a catch you've got to have um, because you know the quarterbacks have made some they made some really nice throws that they just weren't rewarded for it because their guys are dropping the ball. Um, Portier, like I said, had two. Jakai even had one, and that doesn't ever really happen. Um, and it you know you just want to see more consistency from that group. But again. They're not. They're young. A lot of them are young, or a lot of them have never really done it at this level. So there's going to be some growing pains. You want to get. You want to go through those pains in April and not in August and September. So get it out of your system. Um, the good news is they are getting open. Mm-hmm. Like they're they're making plays and they're competing and they're getting open and uh, they just gotta you know they gotta be better when they get there. Cam Fryer, um, I thought had a couple of nice plays in this practice. Uh, on two on Tuesday, but also dropped a ball that you yeah. just go catch. I mean, he made a really nice leaping catch um, during what's that drill, Aslan, that they do, where it's like the outside drills where they're they're throwing the ball sometimes, but they also it's like blocking drills almost outside for the receivers. Do you oh know yeah, what I'm talking about? they're doing like a screen pass pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But in one of those drills, they th- they they threw a ball to Cam Fryer about 20 yards downfield. He made a really nice leaping catch. But then later on in practice, he dropped a ball. And, you know, as a ball, you've got to catch, man. You've got to catch if you're going to be a Division One receiver, which I think he will be. Uh, some other stuff we don't talk about all the time on here. Uh, the defense did really well, linebackers uh, going up against running backs when it came to blitz pickup, which BTW, linebackers are being used a little bit more aggressively, Corey. Mm. I, I don't want to talk. I don't want to give any more details out. I don't want to give away the game plan, but linebackers are a little bit more, uh, a little more aggressive out there. Uh, Jalen Lucas uh, had a win and blitz pickup. One of the, the few wins that I saw there for the offense. Also, Lawrence Toafili, uh, he and DJ Lundy split uh, their head-to-head matchups. Blake Nicholson also had a nice uh, play in, in blitz pickup where he pretty much just bulldozed right through uh, the running back. We won't say their name. doesn't matter. It's, right. it's, it's null on null success that we'll, we'll focus on. But I like, and you, I think you mentioned this on one of the shows probably two weeks ago when, when spring started back up. I like this kind of four offensive linemen, if you will, going up against two or three defensive linemen, maybe two linemen, linebacker. It's basically, folks, it's a center, a guard, a tackle, and then a tight end. And they've got two defensive linemen. One of them's not lining up over top the center, but you know they're, they're, fill, they're in their gaps. And then sometimes a the linebacker will come on a blitz. Sometimes they won't. Uh, and it was kind of cool to see when they would send that and how the offensive line picked that stuff up. Uh, Tommy Wadurajaye is really fast, man. Um, he had a couple moments in practice where uh, his speed was on on full display. He's still uh, learning how, what it's like to take instruction from Odell Hagens, but yeah. he's got he's got some raw tools that are that are being honed quite nicely. Uh, a unit that had Jeremiah Byers and Julian Armella. Uh, as well as David Stickle snapping the ball, did fairly well holding up and, and winning two snaps uh, against the defense. Uh, Sean Murphy had a really nice rep in this four-on-three drill where they, they call his number into blitz, and he he came free and uh, would have gotten to the quarterback had there actually been one back there to snap. So uh, when it came to that early part of the practice, uh, the push and pull there, 
uh, between the offense and the defense was pretty much a stalemate, I, I would say. Uh, the blitz pickup stuff went the defense's favor, but when the offensive line was going up against the D-line and those sort of early trench drills, I, I think uh, offense asserted themselves a little bit better. Uh, first 11-on-11 11 11 of the day, core, I think it was period 11, if I'm not mistaken. Outside. Outside. Mm, okay. Um, nice TFL uh, that we have here from the defense. Second rep when DJ was out there running with the offense. Uh, there are some of these some of these plays. Sione Lolahea, uh, super fast, super disruptive. Uh, the read option wasn't very friendly to them in this period. I think if, if, if I if I say that, that probably would jog your memory the best, Core. They, they weren't having a lot of success right. oh, I remember. handing uh, it, it off and keeping it. And Azarie had a, a TFL in that uh, in that uh, little section, too. Right after Lola Hayes, he had a little uh, – um, a, a TFL coming off the edge aggressively, uh, but you met somebody you mentioned. Uh, look, and I thought the defensive line for the most part was good in an eleven on eleven at the end of practice. I thought they they made it very hard for the quarterbacks to throw the ball. Like they were they were having to, they were getting moved off their spot. Let's say um, really well. It's a it's a good it's a good defensive line. It would appear, but uh, it's just it's something I wrote about that's on the site, and it you, you know it had been a week since we saw these guys, and you just. Watching DJ throw a ball effortlessly 65 yards, I'll never get used to it. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. He did it in one of those drills. He threw the ball from his own 45-yard line outside, and the receiver, I actually think it was a walk-on receiver, caught it in the back of the end zone. Uh, so that's 65, that's 65 yards in the air, essentially, and it looked like he was just lobbing it. Like It didn't look like he threw any real force into it at all. Um, I just I, I can't get over how easily he throws the ball that far. How it just effortlessly it looks. And then look, man, Jalen Lucas is a thing. I think he's a real thing. Like mm-hmm. I think he is. We we keep talking about him ad nauseum. Um, this is something that's going to be. Uh, you know, this isn't a Keon Coleman edition where he's you know one of the best in the country, but he is a guy that um, is going to be a. I think as long as he's healthy, is going to be a big factor in in this uh, in this offense. He is just an absolute playmaker. The speed. I asked uh, I asked DJ Lundy about him. I was like, "Hey man, you get to cover him sometimes in uh, in practice, like you know when you're just doing one on ones and stuff, and you're covering him. What's it like to go out with him uh, on a route?" And he just laughed and he goes, "You know, there's fast, and then there's Jalen Lucas fast." It's and I mean that's DJ Lundy who's a obviously a good athlete. He's a linebacker at Florida State and has scored touchdowns at fullback. And his play plays with a lot of fast guys, and even these guys seem genuinely impressed by how fast uh, this dude is because he is he is really fast. Well, you know we spoke to Shaheen Brown after practice and you know was just kind of having some fun with him and asking him about uh, you know some of these new guys and what it's like. You know, it seems like they've kind of picked up right where they left off the offense just in terms of being uh, quite potent. And he talked about, um, you know, Malik Benson. You give him an inch, he's going to run right by you. And then he talked about Jalen Lucas. And he's like, I, he's like, I think he broke the record for speed. Like, not the speed of sound or anything like right. that. But yeah. in terms of, like, the number that they've hit in Florida State on the GPS, he said it was either, he thinks, 22.6 or 22.8 miles per hour. I can't find the tweet right now. I thought our WarChan account tweeted out, or maybe it was Tom. I can't find it on either, but uh, it cited Xavier Worthy, who I think ran the, the fastest 40 ever at the Combine. Yeah. Uh, and he ran something like 22-4 mm. at some point in a game this past year. Let me see here. Yeah, he uh, no, he ran a 22.7 on a play against Iowa State. Um, that was like a, an analytics company had, had booked him on that, so... Just so think about that. You got a guy that's faster yeah. than the dude that just shattered a record in Indianapolis. It's really, it's really something to watch. And I just hope for all of our sakes, including you guys, obviously, that he stays healthy and you get to see what we're talking about because uh, it's electric. Uh, getting the ball, getting him the ball in space. But look, he's not a whole. He's not going to hit a home run every time he touches the ball. Like it's got to be blocked up well. It's got to be designed well. Um, he's got to, you know, he can't just be a one trick pony. But I'm just telling you. This guy is different. It is a different type of speed. And through six practices, I think that's my biggest takeaway from the offense is that guy. Like, if you'd asked me three weeks ago, I don't know that I would have mentioned him as one of the most, the 20 most important guys on offense. He just wouldn't have occurred to me, right? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. Now I look at him and I'm like, he's a guy they have to get the ball to. Now he's not going to get the ball 30 times, but he's a guy they have to get the ball to um, because he is an absolute playmaker if it's designed correctly. Ain't nobody on the other field, on the other side of, of the line of scrimmage, they can't run with him. If you can get him in space, he will change the scoreboard. Um, and I didn't know that. I mean, I knew he had. I knew he had some kick returns in Indiana. I didn't know he was this kind of this kind of guy. It's wild. I mean, last year he averaged four point one yards per carry and seven point three yards per catch. How many How many carries did he get? Sixty seven. Yeah. He he had two hundred seventy five yards rushing, two hundred forty seven yards receiving last year. So yeah. like not even six hundred yards from scrimmage. Um, that's wild. Like that's. That's almost malpractice, it feels like, when you're in Indiana. Might have been why he got fired, huh? <laughs> yeah. And they got C- C- Signetti or whoever that is. Yeah, that's over right. Here. Now, that Big crazy Sig. son of a gun. Yeah. Google me. Yeah. Google <laughs> me. Yeah. I win, or whatever he said there. Um, go to vitamanager.com. You don't have to go to you have to Google this promo code. We're going to tell it to you right now. It's WarChant Bogo. WarChant B-O-G-O. Go to vitamanager.com. Use that promo code. Buy one item. Get one of equal or lesser value for absolutely free. Lovely how that works out. The Burner Plus on the menu uh, this week for myself. 260 milligrams of all-natural caffeine, raspberry ketones, uh, a couple other things that I can't pronounce, but I know they uh, help increase, enhance the internal body temperature of me to to help me burn a little bit more fat, give me a little bit more energy. Uh, It's crazy how that all works out. In one little bottle that's pomegranate acai flavored and tastes delicious. Seven hours of energy, clinically proven, to also reduce brain fog, improve your mood, get you a better pump in the gym, depending on, again, the variety that you choose. Variety packs available over at vibeenergy.com. Try them out. We've been talking about it for a long while. A lot of people starting to buy in. Mm-hmm. Shout yep. to our guy, uh, Chaco McNasty, yesterday, who, whose tweet we read, uh, a.k.a. Noldad84. Vibeenergy.com. Shake it and take it. Promo code WordChampBogo. WordChamp, B-O-G-O. Back to it, Corey. Back to it here. So I didn't say this in public, so it's kind of weird that I'm, I'm apologizing for something that none of you heard. And I'm according even here. I don't even think you were uh, in, within earshot of me last week, but it was it was Jeff Cameron and I shoulder to shoulder watching practice. And, you know, there was a guy, Jalen Todd. I was just like, you know what, man? I still, I, I still know what we're thinking here. Uh, totally young kid, but I'm just like he – He looks like he is looking at something that is moving way too fast for him to comprehend. I'm like, you know, you get 85 scholarships. You're not going to hit home runs on all of them. Just just the way it works. Even even Kirby and Nick miss on some guys. I'll tell you what. um, I was like, man, I I wonder if he'll play even like 10 snaps here before he figures out that maybe he can't play at this level. He's from a small, small town in Georgia. I think Dublin went to a school that's not really a, a large football powerhouse by any stretch. But let me tell you about this kid on Tuesday. They had him pulling two or three times when they were doing offensive lineman versus defensive lineman drills in the IPF while you were watching one-on-ones and seven-on-sevens, Corey. And this kid, and listen, he he even admitted, I think, when we spoke to him that he he came in a little bit heavier than he needs to be and he'll lose that weight. And he's a young kid and when he gets his nutrition figured out and he's in the weight room and he's being held accountable the way that you're held accountable at a program like Florida State. It's all going to work out and and come off his body and his frame. But, man, he rushed off the snap and pulling and was thudding into guys, like with control. It wasn't like just – it wasn't just blindly running into a a massive humanity. Like, he was hitting his guy strike zone targets every single time. Sione Lolehea got absolutely neutralized in one of the situation pass drills that they had. Some of these situations here, folks, when they move into the IPF and they're doing some one-on-one, seven-on-seven with the receivers, they'll they'll have the linemen going head-to-head, defensive linemen, offensive linemen. They'll usually line up like five guys, Corey, right? Like they'll they'll have five offensive linemen lined up and they'll have four down linemen. And they'll snap the ball, but we don't know, us watching, but only one of those guys is really sent to rush the passer. It might be the, 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 the left defensive end. And then the right tackle's got to go back into pass protection. So in that one situation, Jalen Todd's playing tackle. They send Sione Lolahea to go rush the passer, and he just gets absolutely stymied and stuffed. And I was like, look at this kid. This is awesome. Uh, because you never know with, with offensive linemen. We've talked about it so much. right? It's, it's 
the biggest crapshoot when it right. comes to evaluating these kids. And I know it was just one day, uh, but I, it was so cool to see, uh, just to, to taste my own foot as I put it in my mouth because I'm like, I'm on the Jalen Ton bad wagon. Uh, I own all the stock. Come at me, everybody. Price is medium right now. It's going to skyrocket, though, here, I think. Okay, well, that's good to know. That's good to hear. I think that gets people excited. We don't, again, I think we should warn people that we don't think he's probably going to play a lot this year. Yeah, 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 yeah. necessarily. But you're, you, this is how programs are built, man. You're starting to look like a real program again. I was talking to Tom Block about that, uh, the great Tom Block, who yes. was at practice on Tuesday, just about how he, because this is the first time he'd been out at practice, and he's like, has, 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 has this been a problem all practice? All, spring talking about the drops and I go well there's another day where they had they had an issue like this and I go but the good news is look around man look at all the scholarship guys they have everywhere and they're going up against some real DBs like they, they don't make it easy like Jabril Rawls is a guy no none of us think about I mean mm-hmm. his family does his friends do you know I'm sure his teammates do but nobody listening to this show is like man I wonder how Jabril's doing how is Rawls showing out uh, Jabril Rawls had a really good day on Tuesday, um, and he he might end up being great. He's just a he's a second year guy. It's just his second year in the system. I, I assume he's a redshirt freshman, um, but he had a good day on Tuesday, and he makes it hard for these receivers. And I'm not. I, this is going to sound like a backhanded compliment. I'm not meaning it. I'm not meaning it to be. But he's Jabril Rawls, like he's middle of the depth chart at best. Body, you know, we're, we're, I don't even want to call it the depth chart. He's just, he's not somebody that's on the, the forefront of your brain when you're thinking about Florida State secondary. He's a guy, you know, there's there's obviously the guys we've already mentioned and, uh, and you know, even the, the young freshmen that we all know about, Lester and Bates and all those guys. Jabril Rawls, though, is a guy that whether he ends up being a starter at Florida State or not, he is so much better, in my opinion, than the guys that were the backups a couple of years ago. Oh, man. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They, they weren't running up against Jabril Rawls. Jabril Rawls will embarrass you if you're not if you're not on your if – you, if you're not doing what you need to be doing. Uh, he And he'll tell you about it. They all will. Um, Edwin Joseph, too. Like, guys like that, yes. man. That, Edwin that, Joseph was all over Hakeem in that period three play that I, I mentioned with DJ Uwe Ungle. Like, it was a great throw and a great catch, and it, it was all that because Edwin Joseph was all up in freaking Hakeem's kitchen. So going back to your point about, and I know I, I uh, hijacked it over the secondary, but going back to Jalen Todd, think about those defensive linemen that aren't going against, you know, dudes that will never that have no real, uh, that don't have a lot of potential to actually play here ever. No. That don't make it hard on them. The defensive linemen from four, five, six years ago that went up against offensive linemen that were just not good. And, and so Florida State's starting offensive line wasn't any good. Imagine the backups, folks. The, those defensive linemen weren't getting any good reps in practice because they weren't facing good players. But now they are. Like Jalen Todd, who, again, he's not, he's not Walter Jones. But he made, it, he made it right. He made it hard on those defensive linemen, man. Mm-hmm. That's the kind of talent upgrade that's happened across the board. Don't know that this is a 13-0 team. But I do know from top to bottom, this roster is in a better place than it's been probably in a decade. Mm. You know what I mean? I just think they have a better top to bottom skill at every position. And uh, that's good. That's really good to hear about a guy like Jalen Todd, guys that we don't talk a lot about, that don't get a lot of fanfare. But that's, again, the program. You grow up. You know, you grow up and you and you and you grow up through a program. And by the time you're big and strong, you're, you're big enough and strong enough. You're, you've been in the system for two or three years, and, and that's how programs are built. That's that's how it works, man. Think about – I mean, I, it's, I'm not, I don't mean to bring up a, a sore subject around these parts, but Amarius Mims almost mm-hmm. left Georgia because he wasn't playing, right? Yeah. He, but he got developed in a pretty good – we're ended up, right? Ended up working out pretty well, right? He's going to be a first-round pick. Um, but he had, to, he had to wait his turn and learn the program and learn the system and get bigger and stronger and ready for that level. And maybe you have – that's what's starting to happen now a little bit at Florida State. I don't want to poo-poo this. Uh, I agree with what you're saying for sure. Like the, the amount of depth and the quality that, that is there. I just – it's watching like DJ play and then Brock play. Like I, I don't get too dialed into things because like they're constantly changing guys around them. And it feels like – Whoever DJ is out there with is almost just as good as whoever's Brock's out there with or vice versa. Like the ones right now 
are almost just as good as the twos, which I guess is, right. is good. But at the same time, you know, we we got to we got to we got to level up like the, the ones at some point we, we need to start identifying guys that clearly belong out there, because I think right now we, we like a Jalen Lucas. We like Hakeem. Uh, you know, we like Destin, but, but we need to see sustained like excellence out of these guys so that we know that the, the first team guys really are kind of a, a level cut above the second teamers. Because right now at practice, it's it's really cool, man. Like w- when Brock's out there, it's not one of those things where it's like, well, we have to qualify as a Brock's out there with the second team offensive line or the second team wide receivers because they're seemingly getting the same kind of production out of everybody. And the, and the defense very rarely seems to have like their best 11 on the field as well. So it's, it's been a real kind of interesting way to to evaluate and look at practice, it feels like, through these six practices thus far. Yeah, the, I think, you know, part of me wants them to like, hey, man, kind of try to find your starting 11 or guys that D, you think DJ will be throwing to a lot um, come August. Uh, you know, try to get that going and, and get that get settled in in that. But then I'm like, no, nah, man, it's April. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and you want to see what you got. That's the thing. There's so many different – types of player, types of skills on this team that uh, you want to give them a shot. You want to all give them a shot with the uh, going up against the good DBs, going up against going uh, playing with the more experienced quarterback, like all that, man. You just want to see how they all how they all play because there's a chance that, um, you know, I have no idea. I don't know if they, Van Dravius might start this year. Uh, Destin Hill might start. Hakeem might start. Malik, Jalen Brown. Uh, Jalen Lucas, Ja'Kai, Portier, <laughs> Williamson, like all those guys, literally all those guys are potential starters. So you want to give them some chances to uh, go try to separate themselves from the pack. I would say so far for me uh, at wide receiver, it has been Malik and Destin. Right now are my two guys that I think have separated themselves, but it's so early. And how do you how do you – factor in Jalen and Lucas into that equation right because is, is he a running back is he a guy that you're going to do stuff without the backfield or is he a slot you know he's he's a guy I think that's been every bit as good as those other guys you just mentioned too and you, and you said as much in the beginning of the podcast so it's it's a good problem one of those good yeah. problems yeah um all the good praise and glory on to Jalen Todd Lucas Simmons I need something big guy like Lucas Simmons yeah. come on like let's 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 start let's start growing into this body let's start let's start pushing people around um i would like to see some more of that some winners on this one before we get to more of the 11 on 11 stuff uh, jeremiah byers had a win uh, in the offensive line versus defensive line drills uh, during period 15 uh, i think ira even cited this one too julian armella held his own against daryl jackson Dude, when Dar- but when daryl jackson was winning s- snaps out there and there was two of them that he won in particular against the same player his wins are he dislocates people from their soul just the, the violence, the and the absolute punch that he hits these guys with when he gets off the ball, it's it's pretty eye popping. But there's certain times when he he doesn't win that impressively, and he gets you know held in check by a guy like Julian Armella. So that's kind of good to see too. Uh, Maury Smith uh, had a good win against Grady Kelly. Uh, Bryson Estes I had it with a win over Daniel Lyons. Marvin Jones Jr. is really good. Like there was a moment where he won his his rep against Jeremiah Byers. And like Papuchas is was had like this wry look on his face and like gave him like this like soft clap almost like I don't know what else you want me to tell you like you already know you're really good you just showed how good you are thank yeah. you for being here um, so that was really cool to see uh, Daryl Jackson had a win over Estes and then DJ Lundy uh, had a win over uh, aforementioned offensive lineman uh, coming in on a blitz so that that was good to see what was going on over uh, on the eleven on eleven I guess when period twenty started kicking in core that's when things started getting really interesting it feels like. Yeah, so 11-on-11, 11 11, uh, it was... Or did we jump at it? Was there any 7-on-7 seven seven stuff you wanted to touch on, or did we get to some of that? Uh, let me... I don't think so. There was nothing that really stood out, honestly, uh, except for a couple of drops. Um, you know, I thought Brock and DJ threw it well. Um, they, they were kind of let down by some by some drops. Uh, but And Jalen Lucas took, like, you know, he did what he did. He, he took a little short pass and turned it into a big pass. Oh, also Jalen Brown. So the other Jalen. Hmm. Um he took a from Trevor took, Jackson. Yeah, so he he caught like a I don't know what it would be like a 15 17 yard pass and then it's him against the DB one on one. And I don't know if the guy would the guy makes the tackle or not. But if he doesn't, that's six because that dude again is a fast fast dude. The Jalen's man, 
They're all moving out there. Uh-huh. Even the old offensive lineman named Jalen's, uh, they're they're moving out there. Um, so yeah, so I, I he made a really nice move and catch, and he didn't drop any balls. I don't believe on on Tuesday. He's a smooth kid um, and it, very fast, and he made a catch and then made a little shimmy move. Where if they don't blow the whistle and it's a real play, and he actually did get by that corner, it's a touchdown. Nobody's catching yes. that guy from behind. Yes. He's just again the speed, the speed element uh, is different than it's been. But you brought up. Uh, DeMarco Ward, he had a pass breakup. I can't remember the running back that he was covering, but he had uh, he had a couple of PBUs in coverage. And uh, like you said, didn't you say he had a TFL? Oh, he had a TFL too. Yeah. Um, good to see. He's another guy that we don't even ever talk about. Mm-hmm. But he, I mean, he looks, he's a lot bigger. Uh, he seems to still be moving pretty well. Maybe he's something, you know, yeah. maybe he's something. Because he, I, that was... Honestly, I will say this honestly. That's the first time I've noticed him all spring, but it was three or four different times that I noticed him, yeah. which is a good thing. It's a good thing when you're when Corey Clark's uh, noticing you. And then um, other than that, no. Wait, real quick, I mean, on, the, on the Jalen Brown play, um, you know, they tell them to finish every single rep, right, Corey? Like, no matter what, like, they want you to yeah. run to the end zone. So he, he, like, runs to the end zone. I don't know if he was – dapping it up with somebody like not in a in a bad sportsman like way but like enjoying the moment with one of his teammates and Norvell was like running with him and I think Norvell was like telling him to get back uh with with his teammates on the other side of the field and he said something along the lines of like you're gonna do that a bunch like don't don't be too happy like right now you're gonna do that a bunch in games like it's okay like go back do it again do it again like, right right that in terms of like, the, the promise that he sees in Jalen Brown like he knows that the kid's gonna be able to create plays like that on the regular for him so that but was then, one of the standout moments. Yeah, yeah, and I and I think at eleven on eleven, um, again, I don't, I don't. There weren't a ton of uh, pass plays that hit for anything, but uh, there were a couple. Cam Davis had a really nice burst yes. run up the middle yes. for about seventeen twenty yards. Toa Feely had yes. a run up the middle for about twenty twenty five yards. And look, I, there's no real. They're not getting tackled, and when anybody gets too close to them and they get thudded, the the whistle blows. But they were both really nice runs up the middle. I thought those were the two best plays. Of period twenty, yeah, that's the the eleven on eleven, yeah. and what's interesting, I think, Aslan, is I would say that all the team stuff with eleven on with it's eleven on eleven through the first five days that we've gotten to see, I feel like the running game is is worlds ahead of the passing game as far as it going against the Florida State good defense. You know what I mean? Like when the Florida State starter ish guys are out there, I just feel like you see every practice you see a couple of good runs up the middle. A couple of nice plays with the with the, in the running game, um, and that to me is uh, should be very encouraging. You know, I ju- I just think it should be that if they can have a running game this year, all the other stuff will work out, man. I promise. All the other if you can bring safeties down because they have to respect the run because they're going to be running the ball, um, and and these running backs are going to be hitting holes hard and up the middle of the field and, and getting huge chunks, then that changes everything. And it's quite frankly something they didn't have last year. And through five practices, it occurred to me, especially after the Cam Davis run, it's like, man, in the 11-on-11 11 11 stuff that I've watched, most of the big plays or the plays that I've noticed the most have been running plays, which, again, they're not getting tackled, so how much are they really running plays? But you you see holes developing there where last year at this time, I, didn't, I don't remember seeing a lot of that. So And it played out that way in the fall. So that's a good thing. It says a lot about the old line, I think. Uh, and it's the, the running backs might be pretty good, buddy. Yeah, the second I, I agree with the, the second part of practice, the, the running game kind of started turning a little bit of a corner because period three they they weren't really moving, but they rarely period threes they're going like in it's it's a no huddle like hurry up end of game situation. Very rarely do they seem to bust off a long run in in, in that period, but they had problems with the with the R, not the RPO but the read option game early in practice Tuesday. But the second part of practice, like it was, I think it was Brock Glenn. Uh, I think that's who was with Toofili. No, vice versa. So Toofili was with DJ Uwe Ungale, like bust off a big run. And then the next time uh, they go out there with Brock Glenn, then that's when uh, you see Cam Davis start shining as well. So uh, it was cool to see like those two big runs kind of pop off. Uh, because like yeah, it's 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 feast or famine. I feel like right now in the run game, like either those holes open up and these guys hit it and they're gone because like Fertitta is running down the field with them because you see how excited he gets because they've opened up the right the right alley and the right yeah. crease. So 
uh, we're seeing some of that stuff for sure. That's good to see, right? Yeah. We we because we do think the defensive line is going to be good. Uh, this is a pretty stout front and will be. Uh, you want the linebackers to be good this year, uh, and that's still a question mark. But more than anything, uh, if this team is going to be as good as we want it to be, the running game has to be better. It just has to be it, than it was last year. And so you do want to hear about, or you should anyway, want to hear about the the running backs busting big runs. Uh, last practice we watched, Keziah Holmes had like a 45-yard run for a touchdown. Um, and then, like we said, this practice today, Lucas had a big run around left edge where it's just like, man, it, this was 11 on 11 too. A run around left edge where he just turned the corner. Mm-hmm. You, he got to the edge before you did because that's what he does. Um so, uh, so yeah, it's uh, it, it's cool to see that that's become a, a little more noticeable here early on this spring. Period twenty two. I think they this was another team drill eleven on eleven. I think they it was a second down drill. Core. I think they got two plays to get the first down. Yeah. Uh, Demarco Ward had a sack uh, in one of these situations. So that that was another moment where he flashed there. The the only check marks I have offensively were a swing pass to Keziah Holmes that ended up going for a big gain and then a rush by Lawrence Toafili. Uh, and then we go to period 23, uh, which they started on the plus side of the field, and they would run, I think, what one play and then pretty much trot out uh, future All-American Ryan yeah. Fitzgerald. Yeah. And uh, did you see how far he kicked that last ball? No, because I started walking out to set up my camera. Man, so, yeah, it was basically like – it seemed like it was a late-game scenario, third down around the 40-yard line. You're trying to get a few yards to set up the field goal. That's what it seemed to me anyway with the with the play calls and the designs and everything. Well, um, my man, you know, the first the first kick is a 52-yarder that he makes. Nailed it. I See, that one, yeah, he nailed it. But it, went, it, would, it probably would have been good, I think, from 56. The next kick – uh, same, uh, different hash, I think. Uh, no, maybe it wasn't. No, it was same the same hash. hash. Yeah. yeah, same distance, 52. He did not hit it well at all. It was He was wide right, and it might have been just short. It might if it, if it had been on target, it might have hit the bar. Hmm. Like, he just didn't get it well. Yeah. And so then, whatever it was, two minutes later, they, they he comes back out there for a 53-yarder from the other hash. And, uh, I mean, man, that thing hit middle of the net. Maybe a little higher than that. Like, it would have been literally good from 60. Uh, I mean, he cr- it was like he was really mad about missing the last one. And he let it out. And I, I did, I'll i be honest with you. As good as he was last year, and he was great, I didn't know he had that kind of leg in him. I mean, that was a bomb. So that's good to see. Yeah, future All-American. I mean, what else do you want from this kid? All he does is make kicks, and he's making 50 yarders on the regular now. Anything else from practice? Big picture, little picture. We call, we call the defensive line stout, and I, I pointed this out to Ira, and he then was basically, you're wrong. So um, I do wonder if they've got enough girth on the defensive line. Like Fisk wasn't, you know, a 300-pound dude, but he just played with such a, you know, just such effort and such technique that he was just such a absolute pain in the neck to deal with. And then Fabian Lovett, you know, with his 12-inch hands or whatever his bear claw paws right. were, um, like – I was just watching them, and I'm like, you know, they, they, maybe it's because Tommy Wa sometimes flexes inside, and you're like, man, that that's not a that, that feels like a guy that probably get pushed around if we're playing Georgia in a playoff game. But you know, they're trying to figure out where his home is going to be. Uh, I feel like more than anything, we keep talking about the the speed on on the offense because that's so much easier to quantify and see. I wonder if this defensive line is going to be marked and punctuated by just being quicker and faster uh, than the people that we're going to going be going up against because I just feel like. For now, and a lot of it's because Joshua Fuller's not out there, or Farmer, sorry. Uh, Joshua Farmer not being out there, that's probably a large reason, too, why that they're not nearly as girthy, it feels like, as as I would like them to be. That's the only other uh, observation I had from the day Tuesday. Yeah, we you know we talked about it on headlines, actually, on Tuesday. Like, um, if, because we, look, man, they're not going to have 15 scholarship receivers on the team in August. There are guys that are going to be hitting the portal Um the April 21st, April 22nd. It's just going to happen. You you can watch, be out there and watch practice uh, and see some guys that are like, okay, that wouldn't be surprising if they uh, – and I'm not just talking about receivers. I'm talking about every position. It's just going to happen. There are going to be some spots that open up. So it also works both ways, though. So the portal will be open for them to get players too. And we were talking, like we think uh, – Ira even – I think it was Ira that said it. Ira and Jeff both said that defensive tackle 
is probably where they would look to get one more body. Yeah. And I don't disagree. Yeah. Like the the uh, you know Grady Kelly's a big dude, and uh, Norvell you know Norvell uh, shouted him out for his play. Um, I think in the scrimmage he shouted him out for his play in the scrimmage. Um, so you got him, you got uh, like you said, you got Farmer, you got Jackson. I mean those are th- those are big guys. They're not you know probably as good as Braden Fisk, but Braden Fisk wasn't a he's not three hundred twenty pounds. He was just a strong bull. Uh, so, so the point being, they've, they've got bodies, but yeah, I, I can see where you're looking at what we've seen so far in March and April and be like, okay, we, we the top end is good, man. Jackson and farmers. Good. That's yes. a good combo. Yes. yes. Um, and the kid from West Virginia, who I'm not, again, you've said it four times, they but call I, him Tommy. So you can call him. Okay. Tommy. Yeah. I think Tommy's going to be a real player for them too. I think Tommy's going to help a lot. He's another piece. Uh, and Grady Kelly is nice. Um, a nice depth piece. Uh, he's not a star. He's not Brain Fisk, so don't start thinking that he is. But you could see them maybe getting one or two more defensive linemen. I, I could see that. But overall, when you're talking about a defensive line that has Tommy, Marvin Jones, Patrick Payton, no. Daryl Jackson, no. Joshua Farmer. Um, uh, you know, Lions is a good piece. Uh, Lola Hea. Yeah. Um, that, that's, a, that's a nice – that's a, that's a, that's a good defensive line. But that doesn't mean it can't be better, buddy. Doesn't mean it can't be better. And I guess the bright side of that too is that so much of it is relative, and it's it's like that offensive line is gigantic now, right? Like they're well, they're, yeah, that too, yeah. So you're like, all right, well, that's you know, and those guys look a little bit bigger than those guys, so that kind of you know exacerbates it. But yeah, that'd be good to see them go into the portal and pull another guy from the defensive interior. I, I wouldn't mind that at all. Wouldn't mind that at all. Yeah. Um, how about you folks? Take a shot on something out there. You can't. You know, take a chance on somebody in the portal. Um, I guess you could if you gave money to the battles then and were like, hey, go after this guy. But call your own shots over at mybookie.ag. Use the promo code WORCHANT when you sign up for the first time. You'll get an instant cash deposit bonus. Major League Baseball in action. I think you can you can bet. You ever, you ever done the five innings thing, Corey? No. You, you can bet on a game just like what's it going to be in the first five innings. Like who's going to win? Who's going to be up oh. after five innings? Yeah. Okay. All right. I guess that's because, you know, starting pitchers only go about five innings in this day and age, um, which I don't want to lament too long. But, yeah, that's that's part of the part of the menu of options over at my bookie. Obviously, March Madness going down. Purdue, North Carolina State, NC State getting nine and a half. UConn, Alabama. Alabama getting 12 from the Huskies. Yeah. yeah. It's like, man, like that. You know, they didn't look good at all against Clemson. All of a sudden, they started hitting threes, and then they blew right by them. And you're like, man, all their, you know, that 12 is a big number, and just they catch a little bit of heat in the second half and, and close it to UConn. But UConn, it's that number's scary, but I'm, I'm still going to go with the UConn minus 12. Uh, you make your choices, everybody. Live betting, live casino, it's all there. MyBookie.ag, promo code WARCHANT. Promo requires $50 minimum deposit and rollover requirement to one-time your deposit total, including bonus for withdrawal for full terms and conditions. Visit MyBookie.ag slash about dash us. Baseball, Corey Clark, we did it, huh? Match, yeah. Matched the uh, season total uh, for victories last year on April 2nd. Piece of cake. Yeah, isn't that crazy? They were 23-31 and 31 last year. They're now 23-4. and four. Uh, what a what a turnaround! Um, yeah, no, was, and I was I was I'm glad they won with Brady there because I thought he'd be a bad luck charm if they if they lost and it wasn't an easy win. No, um, no, no. there was some stuff you didn't like to see, uh, but overall, man, um, Tibbs is a monster. Kids just I mean, you think about a guy that can hit a uh, a home run to left field, Oppo. Uh, I guess it was you know Link was saying this after the game it was like a changeup. He stayed back, drove it to left field for an opposite field home run. And then his next at bat, he hits a 110 mile an hour laser beam off the screen in right field, oh. on a fastball. Like he just, he's just, re- he's just really good, man. He is a really, really good advanced hitter, um, and he's been good for three years. But this is a different level that he's reached, uh, and it's fun to watch. It is fun to watch, and uh, and we won't spend a lot of time on a midweek win over Jacksonville. But uh, Cal Fisher, the shortstop made two really impressive plays in the field when they needed them. They had the bases loaded, nobody out in the eighth inning. Yep. Um, and Dorsey comes on. on a fi- and with a 5-2 lead. With a 5-2 lead, yeah. bases loaded, nobody out because Joe Charles couldn't couldn't throw a strike and whatever it was. Um, Dorsey comes on, gets a ground ball. That's not It's not tailor-made. 
uh, and the kid that hit it is busting it down the line. He's not a he's not a big guy like he can move, and he fields it in one motion as a freshman, true freshman that's played what four games, um, three games, yeah. two starts, second start, yeah. yeah. And then he get he starts a inning inning double play, really good turn by uh, Faro, but it was a it's just the 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 way they play defense in the infield. Uh, that play to turn that there hasn't been a Florida State team in the last I don't yeah I don't even know man since maybe Buster was the shortstop that you would have felt comfortable their shortstop starting a double play like that you would have thought oh god he's gonna throw it off the screen <laughs> and they're gonna tie the game on a little ground ball to shortstop but he starts a six four three double play it's a great turn he throw he hits it for row right at the, he gets it to row at a perfect time kind of underhands it to him or side arms it to him quickly and then uh and then the next you know the next guy gets out and instead of you know being in a real pickle there. It's five three, and then they, you know, they win five three. I just, I, 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 I'm really impressed with what he looked like defensively early on. It's just small sample size, and Lodi's had been good all year at shortstop, so he's got a lot to live up to. But then I, what I really was encouraged by was he got up his first at bat. I think he got hit by a pitch. His second at bat, he gets he gets up with a, in a in a one one game, runner at third, one out, and take and just has an awful at bat, two flailing swings. Uh, doesn't make contact, doesn't get close to making contact, swings at a ball in the dirt uh, to strike out, and then they don't score. His next at bat, he's in the exact same spot. They're up 3-1, to one, but it's the exact same spot where there's a runner on third, one out. He gets behind, I think, one and two, takes another gross swing at a, at a curveball, and then they try to throw it again or whatever they try to throw. My man rips it off the right. screen for a double and crushes it. And it's like, man, that's the kind of rebound – that you like to see from a young kid. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that was cool to see. That was cool to see. We we all know about the other guys. They've been doing it all year. He's the new guy, and I thought uh, that was cool to see that he had that kind of what for to rally back from uh, a really bad at bat to have one of the best at bats of the game when it mattered most. Brady Lauk, uh, mm-hmm. Andrew Armstrong combined for six innings, eight strikeouts, only one run, uh, and it wasn't earned uh, amongst those two. But then from there, it was a, a total mixed bag. Four other guys through. Uh, Hudson Rowan, Joe Charles were not effective at all. Uh, were, were very disappointing, to be frank. Uh, but yeah. I thought Brennan Oxford and Carson Dorsey uh, did very well, especially Dorsey being in that situation. Like, I was cooking dinner, and I was looking at the TV. I'm like, oh, there's a runner on. Like, cool. Like, there's, you know, the the, the, the tying run is now at the plate. There's some pressure on Carson Dorsey to, to maybe – exercise some more of the demons that he had to deal with in Clemson. And then before you know, the the bases are loaded and you're like, man, this could, this could be really bad. It's really, really bad. But he was able to yeah. work out of it. Two innings, only one hit uh, punched out two guys did walk to had a wild pitch. But um, as, as Link said in the post game, like they Bob and weaved uh, the, yeah. the bullpen. They just, they just figured out a way to, to get through the rounds and get to the scorecard and get the win. So. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Again, I think that that you know, just the minutia of a baseball season, you can get caught up in it. But when you take the step back, the ten thousand foot view, and look down at a baseball program that is now twenty three and four, um, when last year it, at this time it was in the midst of a two and twenty two stretch, um, is it's just really neat, man. It's it's cool. It's really fun. Uh, I like how this guy runs a program. Like I told you guys, we watch practice. Uh, me and Brady did on on Monday. And there is a purpose with everything they're doing. It is it is intense, uh, and they feel the ball. That, I mean, they're they're good in practice too, and it means a lot to them. And they do a lot of different kinds of drills defensively, and it because it matters. All that small stuff matters. And I just think this the world of this guy as a coach. Um, now, you know, you blow another series like you did at Clemson, Link. <laughs> it might be a different tune on Wake Up War Chant. But no, I, I really like what he's done, and I and. I, I think it's gonna get. We're gonna stop talking about it at some point, or at least I will, um, because it's just it's gonna be this. This is what the program is. This is what this team is. It's really good, but right now it's still it's still remarkable, like the, just the remarkability, if that's a word, of uh, of going from as bad as they were last year to twenty three and four uh, is is something that I just want to keep commenting on. I don't want to take it for granted because they were so bad last year. And we can't take for granted any kind of wins, especially wins when they don't hit the the bejesus out of the ball, but they do everything else well. They, no, they, they didn't throw a lot of strikes, but defensively they were really good. They ran the bases well. And those little things like that can get you. 
those five three wins. Mm-hmm. And you might be thinking, okay, what is it? What does it really matter? A five three win in April? Well, they matter in June when you're trying to get a seed. You know, all the all these things stack up. Not for Florida. They can lose whatever they want in the middle. I assume they lost again on Tuesday. I didn't check. I assume they lost. It doesn't matter. Midweek doesn't matter for Florida, but for everybody else, these little games, these games stack on themselves, and uh, they do matter. And so that was a that was a nice win. And they've got another game uh, later today against Bethune Cookman, five p.m. Yeah, uh, head out there to uh, Hauser, weather permitting. Uh, that is, yeah, uh, might be a little dicey out there. Yeah, I think the Rattlers might have been up on them, but yeah, the Gators won ten to seven. Okay, so, perfect, of course. Uh, softball, 12-0 win over McNeese. Yeah. 8 o'clock start, the ladies. What are we, co- what are we doing? <laughs> I mean, what they, are we doing? They run ruled it, though. They were out of there in five innings. Uh, Michaela Edenfield with four uh, RBIs. Janai Kerr with three. Um, the victory goes to McKenna Reed, four and one-third. Okay, yeah. Only four hits allowed, two strikeouts. So Mimi Gooden came on for the last two outs of the night. So uh, that is good to see. Yesterday's show... Talking about Miami, whether or not to bring them with, uh, generated a lot of conversation, Corey. Okay, good. On the Tribal Council. Um, it was great. It, it was a total purple state uh, platform topic. Like, you know, we, we, we could take it anywhere. And what if I told people, like, I want Florida State to be in the SEC. I wouldn't mind if Miami was in the Big Ten. Okay, I think, yeah. Somebody was pointing that out. They're like, you know... Uh, what if Clemson goes to the SEC, but we end up in the Big Ten with Miami? Like, do you want that rather than, you know, being in the SEC with Clemson? It's like, uh, no, right, fair. I, yeah, fair. Yeah, no yeah. chance. Yeah. I would much rather be in the SEC with or without Clemson, with or without Miami. I'd much rather be in the SEC. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Being the betting men that we are, do we? are you still betting on the SEC? I just, I don't, I feel like all the litigation, um, I just feel like for some reason maybe Fox has a, a fresher set of eyes when they look at us than maybe ESPN does currently. I want to be in the SEC. I ain't going to lie. I ain't going to yeah. lie to you. Uh, but I, I don't know. If I had to put money, I'm, I'm still putting it on, on the Big Ten, even though the, the realignment thread is locked right now. But I think by the time you're listening to this, it should be unlocked. Mm. Started getting carried away, Corey. People just talking about random stuff in there. So Gene came off the top row. was like, we're shutting it down like John Taffer. Shut there you it go. down. Nice. Like P. Diddy used to do it, making oh, the band. No, you remember well, that show? It was well, shut down the studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm shut down the st- I, I guess I can't make P. Diddy yeah, references right now. Holy moly. Yeah. I, who knew that? I mean, I guess that was kind of a, a known secret. I didn't realize that, that yeah. uh, apparently he's been uh, doing doing uh, bad things for a long time. I didn't know anything about that. Uh, you do a good thing. Go to warchant.com, subscribe, and then go to the Tribal Council. There's a thread in there, the Renegade Express Generating discussion sparked by Cummins. Ask the best question of the week. Get us talking on the show. Get everybody talking on the boards and on social. And uh, you get some free swag from Cummins, and then your name will get entered into a grand prize drawing at the end of the year to win one of their awesome power stations or possibly a portable generator. We could all use one of those in our lives. Trust me. Trust me. Jeff Cameron Show, 1 to 3 o'clock. Again, baseball at 5. No practice today, but uh, we'll have that mailbag uh, to keep us fueled. And Thursday, we'll be at practice once more. Thanks for listening, everybody. It's been Wake Up War Champ, presented by the Corner Pocket Bar and Grill.